all right majority of the platform comes with some sort of um, tool cli tool to manage the infrastructure or the environment azure uh, databricks is no different as well databricks has a tool uh, cli tool which um, can help administrator or the developers to run and manage uh, their databricks workspace could be managing their workspace cluster dbfs groups runs jobs uh, or the pools or whatever we have created whatever we created using the terraform or using the um, gui you could manage each and everything using the cli as well so it's up to you how you want to manage it so first thing first you need to have python 3 or more than 2.7.9 version and then you can just start uh, install the databricks cli using the pip using the pip install and then databricks cli i have already got it installed so it's going to be really easy for me um so now if i hit databricks just type in databricks um and iphone edge um, it's gonna give in what it, what what do you want to run you want to run against uh, the cl cluster policy cluster these are the objects databricks has got and we can just start running some sort of commands again one of the objects so if now if you try to run databricks clusters list um maybe before list just do and help um so that it can give you what uh, how can use the cluster um if you want to use the list um and if you just try to list all the cluster it's gonna error out that you haven't got your configured uh, you haven't got your cli configured so you might want to do it first so what i'm going to do is i am going to do a data breaks configure hyphen help and I want to see how you can configure your um, authentication. So this configuration is basically your Azure Databricks can speak to your um, workspace, this workspace, so that it can pull out the information from here and list down everything here. So um, hyphen hyphen token is the parameter. I'm going to clear the screen. Um, probably increase the font a little. And I'm going to type in Databricks configure hyphen hyphen token that's what the helper function had the first thing you want is the databricks host how you get it how do you get it is if you click on the databricks workspace you get a host now this is your host come back to your terminal enter the host and then you need a token token is a super secret password so you want to make sure that you keep it really uh, in a secure place maybe a vault or somewhere that you decide um, so if you go to your admin section and you go to user setting, you can just generate a token um, for Azure CLI and I just want to make it valid for 10 days. Um, get it generated and just copy this, paste it right over here. And this is now, um, now this is now authenticated. Now if I start doing data breaks, clusters list it should start giving me list of all the clusters so you could see that uh, I have two clusters running uh, one is in a in a running state and another one is uh, uh, terminated so you could just um, manage all of your clusters from here you could just uh, uh, probably say something like data breaks um, start clusters so you could just type in clusters and see what all option it has so you could just list down the uh, cluster you could just start the cluster and, um, and 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 restart clusters as well so what I'm gonna do is I am going to do a data breaks let's probably list down the clusters a little in a better way clusters list and what you want is you wanted to pull it in a JSON format probably and then just beautify it with JQ and if you see there's a little type over here clusters and if I do uh, hit enter it's gonna give me in the JSON and then if you have a JQ installed you could just use the JQ tool as well to to just to make it a little prettier 
uh, once you've done that you could just uh, create your own cluster as well or you could just um, start or um, uh, terminate a cluster as well so if you do a data bricks clusters start cluster ID and just enter the cluster picked right from here they should start uh, the cluster and you can just get the events of the cluster as well what all it is doing at the moment so you could just use the uh, cluster event command so what you could do is data breaks clusters events and then the cluster ID and my cluster ID was this one and I can just hit enter and this should give me okay this is um, that the, this user particular user started to um, gave a command of running the cluster um, and then it was uh, then it was it got started as well by the same user so this is how you could just manage it you could just create your own uh, uh, own cluster as well um, just like we have got two clusters at the moment if you go back right over here we have got two clusters at the moment you could just create your own uh, cluster as well you could just use a JSON so if you if you start uh, just do a data breaks uh, clusters help you would just get that how do you create a cluster how so how do you do it you just do it using a JSON file so what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna create a very a tiny JSON uh, just gonna be create cluster dot JSON and the JSON gonna have certain information uh, parameters like the cluster name which is going to be cluster underscore name that's going to be Sean test cluster and that's going to be in the strings as well separated by a comma and then we need the spark version as well spark version and the spark version could be picked right from here which is you could just select uh, from whatever spark version you want maybe select an older one uh, 7.3 so I'm gonna go back to my terminal and just tell it to use an older version of spark Scala 2.12 and separated by a comma again and what I need to do is I want to use a node type of somewhere standard standard and go back again and standard ds3 v2 so probably i'm going to use the same um, d3 and then v2 and yeah that's about it i would like to have the minimum worker node as well configured so that's going to be num underscore all these configuration are available on Azure data break site so you probably don't need to worry about these configuration so once I've done that I would make sure that it's a valid JSON followed by a comma separated now if I just uh, I could just run the cluster using data breaks clusters clusters and then create hyphen json hyphen file and then create json file now it's gonna start creating the cluster however it says that the d2v2 is not supported uh, so let's probably try to use something which is supported i am going to edit my cluster JSON just remove whatever is not needed put the right standard and then I am going to 
start um, creating the cluster and if you see that it has started to create the cluster again now if I do a data breaks clusters list it's gonna give me the cluster list that this one is running again right picked up from the cluster pool so Sean test cluster is the one uh, which we created um, and you could just use the data breaks command again data breaks clusters events and then the cluster ID and then this is this is my cluster ID and you can get all the information in a JSON format cool um, that's how you can and you can just manage the cluster by restarting um, or or uh, just using the uh, any of the termination command as well let's clear the screen and try to run some of the more commands um, uh, some of the more utilities so data breaks also come up if you do a data breaks data breaks hyphen edge it gives you certain objects so we saw how you could just use the configure and then how you can use the cluster as well it also helps us to interact with the file system uh, distributed file system um, so let's see how it kind of helps us use it as data breaks FS if you do an help it says that it can do a cat uh, a configure an LS uh, and, and copy these are mostly the Linux uh, command which you see day in day out um, list all the directories make a directory move a file or remove a file so let's probably clear the screen again and start listing down all the directories we have in the cluster so you see that we've got two directories created by default you could just uh, get the absolute value as well um, so you could just type in absolute it's gonna give you okay this is the absolute uh, path and within hyphen L it's gonna give you all the um, size and number of uh, directories and the exact path of your folder so if you just want to um, see what's inside your cluster log folder so what you could just do it do an FS LS and see that it has got these um, and it's a directory and then you could just go inside this folder also and do the similar operation what you could have managed using uh, locally as well so you've got drivers executors uh, logs you could just create a so underneath the cluster logs you could just if you wanted to to create a new folder you could do that as well so if you just type in mkdirs and then you could just use um, just give it any name uh, maybe maybe test that's the first thing which comes into the mind and now it would should it should create um, the directory and now if you go underneath it um, you should have test right underneath it um, and that's how you could just um, uh, manage your distributed file systems as well um, you could just use the data breaks um, jobs command as well at the moment you should shouldn't have any job but ideally when in a production environment you should have multiple jobs as well you could just manage secrets as if you see data breaks secrets using the help command you would see that you could just list down all the scope so you could just at the moment we would have an empty scope because we haven't put anything under our scope so it's gonna be secrets and then the list and the scopes now it should give you empty scope empty backend key vault and URL so you could just use the scope and underneath the scope you could just create um, certain values and those uh, values would be um, would be used in any of your notebooks jobs as well all right that's it from the CLI uh, session I hope this was informative you could just use the Azure CLI to manage the workspaces objects uh, be it um, uh, jobs cluster secrets or any of them I hope this was informative thank you